wearing a blanket? Because it keeps me warm when you're walking around half naked. We keep this house cool for these guys. They trap me. So I get left walking around looking like this half the time. That's on you, bro. That's on you. Let's get this way in. I feel like I'm going to like UFC way in. And like the towel's gonna get held up in front of me. <laughs> I can I can see your, your saw your cheeks though. You can see my cheeks. You just can't see the full full Monty. I can't get on this naked because you see the reflection in the in the scale. One sixteen point eight. Bite time. We're ready for it. Let's get it. Let's get shredded. Let's go. <laughs> if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Morning weigh-in done. I always do my morning weigh-ins. First thing, rolled out of bed, not drinking anything after going to the bathroom. That is just the most accurate weigh-in you're gonna get. But if you don't do it then, the key is just being consistent with when you time it. So for me, that's gonna be how I'm gonna go about doing my weigh-ins. And I'm personally gonna try to do them daily as much as I can so that I can focus in on my average weigh-ins. So that's one tool I'm going to be using and I'll share with you throughout this video other tools I'm going to be implementing for this journey. First things first though, I am so thirsty after being up for a little bit. Starting my day with some hydration before we caffeinate, that's what we're trying to do here. I have been really loving the sauna life collagen and greens. If you follow me on Instagram, I've been sharing this quite a bit. I personally really love this stuff because it allows me to get an all-in-one without having to do seven different drinks. I get the collagen benefits here. In addition, there's a greens and reds formulation in here that's super good. It's got a ton of good ingredients in there and I do want to say it's probably not overly dosed with the greens which is probably why it tastes so good it's got some reds and other things in there that make it taste really nice I get kind of a an apple light apple cinnamon flavor from it but you can get a couple different options I like to mix these two together this is the strawberry and they came out with very berry it's naturally sweetened so if you want to stay away from sucralose this one is sweetened with stevia they both taste good just the strawberry one's sweeter I do a half scoop of each mix them together and I've been doing this twice a day I feel like my nails have been growing longer because I've been pretty consistent with it for a month but I'm gonna keep going on it and we'll let you know. I do have a discount code. It's just a refer and earn program. So if you wanna try it out, Kara 10 will save you a little coin, no pressure. This is just what I've been really enjoying in the morning. So I'm gonna drink this before I make my coffee and lay out what I gotta do today. I'm about to head out for a bike ride. It's noon right now. I needed to just do a few things around the house first. And for me personally, cardio lately has been a lot of leisurely bike rides outside, nothing too intense, or I've been trying to get back into my running consistently. So for me, I'm going to be aiming for three scheduled days of cardio a week, in addition to that eight to 10K steps per day. Cardio for me is something I actually just love to do i'm very thankful for that i'm very appreciative of having more time in my schedule now to just move my body so one of my favorite things is going outdoors for bike rides i am actually extremely sore today even though it's the beginning of this series i've had some really good workouts leading up to this so my body is sore from head to toe right now. So I think first getting in that bike ride is gonna loosen me up. I'm gonna do an at-home training session today. And then I have a massage, deep tissue massage scheduled for I think five o'clock. So I've got about five hours to get some stuff done. And then hopefully that massage helps my body recover. I do plan to continue to incorporate those recovery techniques in, whether it's massage, foam rolling, stretching, sauna, all those things because I noticed the balance for me with wanting to train as intense as I wanna train, my body won't recover. So I'm gonna be playing around with some different recovery techniques. I actually just threw it into my water bottle. I'll share with you. You're supposed to drink this prior to your workout, like 30 minutes prior to training. This is a glycerol uh, hyperhydration formula 
This is by the brand Gorilla. I did get this to use for running. The claims on this are intramuscular hyperhydration intense pumps, increases power and endurance, which is why I got it. I think they also make a hydration product as well, but I'm gonna put this, I did put this in my water to take with me for my bike ride because it's pretty hot out. So I'm just gonna be playing around with different things to assist in my recovery. That way I can train, hopefully how I wanna train, run, do all the things I wanna do, but still feel good. So for me, this is about still feeling good in my body. I don't wanna be waking up every day hunched over, walking around like this. It doesn't feel good, so I want to still preserve my body and do the right things. That being said, let's go get a little, little bike ride in. Taking a rest for a minute. It's so gorgeous out. I am, let's see, I just paused my watch. Probably won't be able to see it. I'm about five and a half miles. Ooh, my camera's dirty. Everything gets a little dirty out here. I'm about five and a half miles out. So if I turn around, that's gonna be an 11 mile bike ride, about an hour, moving at a decent pace, nothing too crazy. Um, just feels good to kind of move my body, get some sunlight, be outdoors. It's so peaceful. I will never take this for granted being, what the heck day is it? I don't even know, Thursday? And being able to just randomly go out for an afternoon bike ride get in this gorgeous weather. This is never gonna get old to me. I'm so appreciative to be able to do this, but feels really good. So just wanted to do a quick little check-in. Workouts, cardio, fitness, it does not have to be a set protocol. It can be whatever you enjoy. So for me, going out for a bike ride just doesn't even feel like a workout because I enjoy it on so many other levels. So you have to find what you love to do that way it makes it easier for you to get out there and do it because we're not always motivated we're not always disciplined the excitement of a brand new program and workout is going to wear off so you need to find those things that you know have the benefit that you enjoy on another level beyond just burning calories so let's get the rest of this bike ride done Oh, you got a messy kitchen. We, get, we gotta like Instagram this up. So much. Hold on, be right back. We gotta talk now about one of the most powerful, most helpful tools with achieving your weight loss and health goals. That is tracking your nutrition. This can be done a couple of different ways. For me personally, I do like to use a tracker in my phone. I've been a MyFitnessPal user for a long time. I just find it super user friendly, but if you don't want to have an app on your phone, you could certainly track just in a journal, pen and paper style. That will work. However, I do prefer and suggest using a tracker on your phone because it's going to really give you a more clearer picture of your overall intake with protein, carbs, and fats, as well as micronutrients to really just give you the best overall picture. For myself right now, I'm gonna just be tracking my intake as it is. I'm not adhering to set goals at the moment. I'm just gonna track and after a week or so review with where my calories and macros are at. If you are new to tracking, learning about macronutrients can seem overwhelming. The more you get used to tracking, in addition to looking at the numbers, but also really paying attention to how your body is feeling and what your body is telling you is so important in this process because it's gonna be different for all of us and we're gonna have different requirements on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's important to start paying attention to what your body is telling you and how you're feeling. For instance, I may have one day where my hunger cues are really low and maybe it's because the day before I didn't do a whole heck of a lot. So naturally I may just eat less one day Whereas comparatively, if I go out, I have a super hard training session, I get some cardio in, I may be way more hungry, maybe I crave more carbohydrates, maybe I'm craving more protein. These are all good things to pay attention to and keep notes on because it allows you to learn your own individual body and better understand how to tailor your nutrition needs moving forward. Not every day needs to be exactly the same with eating. So we're at that stage with starting 
out a new program where we're just collecting all the data, collect as much data as possible. So not just what you're eating, but what you are feeling and how you're responding to it. I personally really want to prioritize just the overall balance of my diet and the balance of my meal. So really trying to put forward a better effort with balancing out each and every meal that I'm eating, really trying to focus more on whole foods. I can very easily want to grab my protein snacky treats, the convenience items, and those are needed for sure, but I really want to do better with having more whole foods in my diet and making that effort because I know from history, when I select more whole foods, I feel more energized, I feel better, I perform better when it comes to my workouts. I want to mention too, investing in a food scale. This is an old Cuisinart one we've had for a long time is such a helpful tool along with this process. So many of us don't understand what we're really eating. So this is where tracking is super helpful because as much as we're honest with ourselves, we don't always really know what we're consuming. So having that scale, taking the time to start tracking and measuring your meals on the scale and then putting it into your tracker is gonna give you the most accurate picture of what you're truly consuming. Again, being honest is the best process here. There's no sense in fooling yourself. Just be honest with yourself. That way you're getting the accurate data. And then from there, you can make some changes. I'm going to give myself at least a one full week, possibly two for data collection only. From there, this is where I'm going to go ahead and review my food journal, review my workouts, take a look at what was going on in my life that that led me to where those macros are and also look at my weigh-ins too to see where I wanna go from here. So you also have to review what you're doing, assess it and make changes accordingly. And I'm definitely gonna show you a lot more in future videos on how to go about making changes, when you should, how aggressive you should make changes and all that kind of stuff. So that'll be in future videos. But I want to emphasize, you need to have some realistic expectations for what you plan to see here. So just because we're starting out on a new plan, I get super excited, I get super motivated. You're not gonna see changes overnight. I woke up this morning, my weight was up a pound and a half. Not because I did anything wrong, it's body fluctuations. I had a deep tissue massage last night. I even slept in, but maybe I'm holding a little water, I don't know. But we have to be realistic with ourselves that things are going to fluctuate. Macros are going to fluctuate. Weigh-ins are going to fluctuate. Things are going to fluctuate day to day. So slow down a bit. Give yourself a week or two to collect the data, and then we'll go forward from here. Everyone's always in such a rush. So I really want to emphasize that this process should really not be rushed if you want it to work and you want to make changes that are going to be sustainable for you. You got all the things. You got a nice cup of water. Got a face full of kale, kale, baby. Love it. Strawberries are ridiculous. They're so big. They're so good. Literally, just add fruit to your greens. That's all you need. That chicken looks delicious. Mm. I'm always so jealous when you eat it. It's like I don't want breaded chicken. So crispy, bro. I'd, I'd rather have this over Chick Fil A. Oh my god, yeah. That's what made me think to like cook this because. I love a good Chick-fil-A crispy chicken sandwich, but I'd honestly rather just make this at home. Mmm. Mm, so juicy, bro. It's so good. It literally turns out perfect. Mm. It's so simple. Talk to them in a second. Right on. Unless you want to talk to them right now. Okay, I just want to eat my chicken. Mm -hmm. I like you guys and all, but I kind of like my chicken a bit more. Let me know if you need this recipe. Kind of showed it, but people are always like, give us the recipe. So let me know, let her know. These guys, look at these two. So tired from their outing today. We had a great little outing at the local Oz Fest. Nutrition I often find is one of the most important tools for you in your health wellness, weight loss journey, whatever it may be. But there are a ton of other variables there in other areas that you should consider and possibly prioritizing. 
One of the other areas I'm going to be focusing on is my sleep and my sleep hygiene. Quite honestly, this is sometimes an area with clients we will work on first, especially for my weight loss clients who are just so eager. They just want to lose the weight. But if their sleep is just not well controlled, they are not sleeping well, they're not sleeping deep enough, it's all over the place. Oftentimes we have to work on that first to get a little more consistency, focusing on the good sleep hygiene before anything else can actually come into place. Sleep can really impact your health beyond weight loss, just your health in general. So that is one of my goals here. I've actually been doing really good this week. I use my Fitbit app for tracking my sleep. My goal is to stay within that seven to nine hour range, preferably over eight hours of sleep. So I am gonna set my goal at eight hours. I would like to stay on more of a consistent sleep cycle. So for me, going to bed by 10.30 and waking up by 6.30, is ideal and it's also realistic for me. So I've been really good at putting my phone away early enough on to wind down for the night, watch some mindless TV that always helps get me relaxed, but that's something to consider for yourself as well as you're working on your goals. The other thing I failed to mention because it's probably, I don't wanna say the easiest part of all this for me, but that is the weightlifting component. So training for me is something I've been really consistent with. I love it. I look forward to it most days, not always. There's days like yesterday, I just didn't really feel motivated to work out from home. My whole body was sore. I wasn't super into it. But for the most part, I really enjoy lifting and I have been doing five days a week for a long time now. That really, for me, has worked out to be the best number of days per week to give me a couple days off to rest and recover or have active rest days. So today for me was a recovery day. I did not lift today. Just gonna do some cardio today. But five days a week lifting is what I am going to continue to implement. It works best for me and I will be sharing more of my training style and I will be switching to a new training program pretty soon. So I'll probably share some clips and information on that as well. But that's that's not gonna be a huge change for me. I'm just gonna keep lifts at five days a week. I would like majority of those lifts to be at the gym versus home workouts but I do some home workouts still based on the day and I enjoy that I'm able to be flexible with myself and have that flexibility where I can often still have a really good workout in our basement using the equipment we have here. But that is gonna be the plan for lifting. And maybe as things go forward, I will switch to doing more progressive overload and really tracking things, but to not overwhelm myself We're just gonna stay consistent with the five days of lifting a week. I do more of a body part split for my lifts as well. We have some tired puppy dogs up in here. We went to OzFest today and they got to meet a lot of people. So that's baby Justice, Joey Justice. Say hello. We got Bruce Wayne over there, Shushin. They are beat. Coming for moral support. All right, friends, that delicious meal is in my belly. We are digesting, and I am gonna head out for a run. It is hotter than balls outside, but I just want to get out and get a nice little run in. The deep tissue massage yesterday really helped me, I think. I feel really good today, so I just Want to get my body moving, make sure I get in my steps because I really haven't moved much today. It was more of a planning day for Jason and I. In this video, I just wanted to share a lot of the initial steps for what I am personally doing to just get started because that's half the battle is just committing and getting yourself started. With that being said, you have to actually come up with actionable steps that you can implement. So I want you to take a moment, comment down below one, two, maybe tops for actionable steps that you are gonna implement to help work on your goals as you get going here. So that's gonna conclude episode one. Until next time, friends, don't forget to stay driven.